let's let's start with this this fun character. Piloixter uh, has a play effect that says gain one amber for each card in that player's archive. Oh come that on! That player discards each of their archive cards. Oh come on! <laughs> <laughs> and ready and say check at all the amber in the world. <laughs> check one, two, hello. My name is Derek Porter, a.k.a. Wigsby on Board Game Geek. And hey, I'm Candace Harris from Board Game Geek as well. And welcome to Tea Forge, the show all about sampling teas and forging keys. And uh, yeah, episode three. <laughs> and as, as, as I promised at the end of our last episode, we're going to do something special. And uh, by the time this video is posted, uh, the Martian Civil War event that has been going on has been going on for roughly about a month. There's probably a few days left by the time you're watching this episode to participate in the, for the official to log your official results. Um, but uh, I managed to snag a couple of leftover pods from an event at my local game store, and um, we're going to go ahead and do our own little mini Martian Civil War game here. So we have opened a couple of sealed Grim Reminders decks and uh, swapped out a pod. So if you're not familiar with what this is... Uh, is it's uh, it's a limited run event. Uh, you can find a local game store. You can go to you know go to the official KeyForge website and find out which stores are running events. Um, and uh, you are supplied. There's there in the lore of KeyForge, <laughs> which <laughs> we're all familiar with. Yeah, there is unrest in the House of Mars. The uh, <gasps> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Um, the the <laughs> elders uh, have been running things for a while, and uh, the Ironix rebels are yeah the Ironix rebels are <laughs> are not having it, and so uh, they are rising up. And basically, what's going on right now for a limited time, like I said, you only have a few days left by the you know after the posting of this video, but uh, after all these events, basically uh, all the uh, win and losses wins and losses are recorded from each event. And then that will shape the outcome of the Civil War. And uh, the results will have an effect moving forward on how the House of Mars will function. Uh, if the Elders win, everything will kind of stay the same. Mars will stay very much green. If the <laughs> Rebels win, then uh, the uh, the House Mars will, uh, will – well, the cards will face some aesthetic changes. And um, whereas traditionally Mars has kind of been about, you know, scooping things off the board and, and invading the board uh, with, with your minions – uh, it will become much more combat focused. It will be much more teeth in, in your face. Anyway, when you go to an event, each player chooses a side. And uh, today, I am going to be fighting on behalf of the rebels. So, Ironix rebels, uh, change is coming. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> and I am fighting on behalf of the elders because they're more green. And yeah, I keep, love green. yeah, keep Mars green. Yeah, it's, it's Candace's <laughs> yeah. player color is green. Yeah, so. Um, in fact, we were setting this up. Uh, I I told you it's like okay, yeah, great. Uh, I, I maybe I'll do a green tea if I if I'm gonna play elders, and then you're like, oh wait, 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 green, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm like, no, I need to, to be green. elders if there's any greenness. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll dive into our decks in a minute and uh, move forward with how uh, the Martian Civil War uh, uh, format works. But first, we got to sample some teas. So Candice, why don't you go first today? Okay, so Derek, I am drinking a rose black tea. Um, it's loose. I've probably been steeping it a little too long with my little buddy. Uh, but <laughs> let's see. Ooh, it's it's really lovely. Like, usually I don't like floral tasting teas. Or maybe it's just a jasmine thing I'm not a big fan of. But this black with black tea with roses it's working for me oh how about cool. you all right so uh you sent me a sampler before we started the started filming the show uh from blue ribbon uh of a bunch of their stash teas and um to stay on theme with the Martian Civil War event, I chose to drink a green tea and but because <laughs> I'm the rebels uh you'll notice that despite it being a green tea it has a red 
uh, you know, hue to it uh, because we're the rebels, <laughs> and that's because it's a pomegranate raspberry green tea from their Ooh. stash collection here. Um, and I've never now I am not a tea aficionado. Uh, Candace is, is more into the tea teas here, so Candace <laughs> is the expert. I've never paid attention really to expert. ingredients on tea bags, and I just glanced at this, and it says that there's green tea, hibiscus, and orange peels in here, and I'm like, this sounds like potpourri. Uh, <laughs> you are drinking potpourri <laughs> <laughs> probably um but when i went to go start uh steeping the tea when i cracked open the bag i could immediately smell the raspberry smell and then what i presume cool. is the hibiscus smell it, it smelled very flowery so more and, flowers uh, lots of flower yeah, yeah, tea happening very much. today um i threw in just a small packet of stevia because i don't like to drink green tea unsweetened personally i drink green tea pretty regularly but uh i always like to put a little stevia so i threw a pack of stevia in here and uh gonna try pomegranate raspberry green tea for the first time Thoughts? it's not as tart as i was expecting to be honest with you what I are like you this. tasting more the raspberry or the hibiscus or oh definitely the raspberry definitely the okay. raspberry um the pomegranate that sounds lovely yeah like i said i was expecting more tartness considering yeah. the pomegranate but um but uh, this is pretty good. Yeah, it's there. It's there. But yeah, it's not. Um, I, I would say that if you're intimidated by something pomegranate flavored, I don't think this is going to turn you off because it's it's very subtle. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm, cool. I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, I taste the pomegranate about as much as I taste the orange peels. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. That might be good iced as well. Yeah. Um, I kind of do wish I had for your iced dad this tea. Now. Yeah. Oh yeah, for dad tea. <laughs> Yeah, put this in the mixed berry mix, yeah. All right. Well, I'm oh. excited about my deck construction here. All right, what'd you open? So, yeah, tell me about your deck first. Okay. So, first of all, we have my main Grim Reminders deck is called Duval, the Quantum of Evo Sky. And I Ivosky? ended up... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Ivosky. <laughs> that sounds fancier. <laughs> I ended up going with uh, removing Star Alliance, mainly because I just love Brobnar and Untamed. So I kept them in along with my peaceful Elder Tanner Mars pod for the Civil War. Oh, yes. And uh, Brobnar and Untamed are known for their peaceful qualities. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And uh, I'm excited about a couple of cards that I saw in these pods. Um, I have a beanstalk, which I love. Uh, Are you familiar with the beanstalk? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've never, uh, I suppose I should point out, every beanstalk deck I've seen, I've never won against. Oh. <laughs> so. Okay, so I do have my beanstalk, which is going to let me basically get a lot of these giant Brobnar creatures out into play. So I'm excited about that. And I have two Brick Nasties. Oh, that's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that I'm excited about for the, for the Brobnar pod. But then for Untamed, I ended up pulling two Cauldron Artifacts. And... Uh, I don't know. I haven't played too many decks with a cauldron, uh, but it has an omni ability that lets me put the top card of my deck face up under the cauldron. And then if there are three cards under the cauldron, I can play them one at a time as if they were in my hand. So imagine if I'm able to get both of these out, Derek. Wow. And then yeah, I, also, <laughs> I also have a spooky charge. Uh, which lets me forge a key at current cost if I'm haunted. And then uh, on oh, my Mars, my Elder Mars pod, this Crystal Hive artifact seemed cool. Uh, it has an action ability that says, for the remainder of the turn, gain one amber after a creature reaps. So basically, then, it allows you to, uh, <laughs> on, on Mars, you can uh, reap for two instead of just one. Oh, yeah, but I have to be playing Mars. I have to activate yeah. Mars to do it. Yeah, yeah, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. And then I was also kind of creeped out and excited that I have an Ether Spider because I've played against a, a, a couple of decks that had this card, but I don't think I've ever had one myself. So, oh, cool. Uh, they're very creepy and 
We'll talk about it when it comes into play. But <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> and then for my token creature, uh, my Mars. I have the researcher that uh, has the Omni ability. Reveal a Mars card from your hand and archive it. So I am. I'm pretty excited about this uh, this deck here. Yeah. What about you? What do you have? Yeah, so we did kind of gloss over it a little bit, but basically the whole purpose of the Martian Civil War event is that you we each receive for our side a pod, which is a, basically one uh, third of a Keyforge deck is one of the three houses. We get a pod's worth of Mars cards that we must swap in for uh, one of the uh, houses in the decks we have. Now, in some formats, you might be able to do this across uh, two, maybe even three decks. For our purposes, because we like to keep it kind of casual here, uh, we're just using one deck and then just swapping one in. If either of us had pulled a deck that had the Mars house in it already, we would basically have to swap it out with that one. And so, oh, no that, double Mars action. Yeah, no That'd double so Mars. Sick. Yeah, <laughs> uh, they can't agree right now. So yeah, so the, the ways of Mars are it's all it's all in uh, it's all in flux right now. That we don't know where we're going to end up. <laughs> all right. Um. So I am amused uh, with the name of this uh, deck that I got. I got. <laughs> Uh, youthful cat Mario. <laughs> Meow, you know, Super Mario 3D World thing going on. Uh, love the name. That's amazing. Uh, it's Star Alliance, Geistoid, and Unfathomable. Um, I was really belly aching over which house to swap in my Iron X Rebels for. Um, I ultimately decided to swap out the Unfathomable. And in doing so, what I'm losing there is unfa the Unfathomable pod had a lot of your typical key denial, like capture amber, increase amber cost. So I ousted that for Mars because <laughs> um, I feel like I might be able to combo better with the Geistoid and Star Alliance uh, pods there. Uh, one of the interesting cards I got in my Geistoid house, though, is a Mamet card. Mamet is a is a pretty fun card. It has a play and destroyed effect where when you, when that happens, when you play it or destroy it, you archive the top card of your discard pile. But what makes this one really interesting is it has a discard pip. It's been enhanced with a discard pip. Now, the Keyforge timing chart tells us that the bonus icons are resolved before the play effect. So this means that this particular Mamet allows me, so I have to discard a card first. Oh, so you before get to choose it's what you're So basically, archiving. this is a special Mamet that when I play it, That's I get cool. to archive a card from my hand. If that card has any scrap effects, I would get to resolve those as well because it would go That's to the discard cool. pile and then get archived. So, yeah, it's a fun little uh, fun little interaction there. Uh, I've also got – this is – I don't think in the games we've played Candace, I don't know if you've seen this yet. I've got an Infiltrator. Have you played with an Infiltrator before? Ooh. I feel like I've been stung by one of those before. Okay. <laughs> so there's a keyword on here called treachery. And what that means is is when this card enters play, it actually goes to your side of the board. So you'll need to have a proxy card if that happens. Uh, okay. Obviously we're playing over remote, so you don't. I can't just pass you my card. You know? <laughs> um, but uh, so that means it goes over to your side of the table. And it also has the keyword versatile. So that means when it's on your side, it's uh, versatile means that it's always in your active house. So that whatever house you choose, uh, Infiltrator can be used. Uh, it has Skirmish, and at the end of your turn, you destroy infiltra Infiltrator's neighbors. So it basically murders your, murderizes your board a little bit. Um, oh, no. Yeah, and it, it's hard to remove from the board because you can't just fight it into something because it has Skirmish. It won't take any damage. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, that's kind of fun. And then uh, uh, here's a really deadly combo here. Uh, I have a, kind of a Geistoid staple, kind of fun card to see every time you pull a Geistoid house is Winds of Death. When you play Winds of Death, each player archives each creature from their discard pile, and then I destroy each creature on the board. Mm, um, also board has clear. A, yeah, it also is, this has been uh, is that is that enhanced? Yeah, I think it's been enhanced with the capture pip too. Um, but that's just really deadly with this. I have, it's an artifact called Cursed Tomb, which, uh, while it's in play, each creature with no amber on it gains destroyed, purge this creature. So basically, if wow. I have this on the board and then drop Winds of Death, any creatures that don't have amber on them are out Purged. of the game. Uh, this might be a quick game. <laughs> yeah. Well, and what's interesting <laughs> is because of the Mars uh, uh, Civil War, 
we are, have tokens on the board. This, you do, there's typically not any token interaction, token creature interaction in Grim Reminders. Yeah. So uh, this means that if you have non-creatures as tokens on the board, I can purge those. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh. So, but it's going to um, purge yours also, right? Yes, it works both ways. Yeah. Good, good, good. But, uh, and that's what's funny, is uh, uh, I got rid of all of the Capture Amber cards in my uh, Unfathomable house, so. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be an interesting so, game. <laughs> yeah. So I don't, I don't know if I'll stall the game out by us just not having any cards to play or not. I have no idea. <laughs> we'll see. Cool. Oh, as awesome as that combo is, my Mars pod, which is G Carenza the Chillax Rebel. The token is the Minute Martian. Uh, it's a token creature, obviously. And then after it, it's two power, two armor. And then after fight, it can make a token creature. And as far as I can tell, other than this card here, my clone home, this is the only way I'm going to get token creatures on the board. So I don't oh. know if you're going to see much of my token <laughs> or not. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> considering that I'm going against a Beanstalk Brobnar deck, uh, I have a feeling that I any tokens I put out there are just going to get squashed. So. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Might um, be friendly giants. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> also, Derek, we should mention we have these super cool haunted tokens. Haunted, unhaunted, haunted. Uh, that we were gifted Yes, uh, when I was at the Vegas Vault Tour, uh, Tobin from the uh, Warcast Reforged Tales from the Battle Line podcast uh, gifted me gifted me two of these. One uh, wanted me to deliver to you, which I I did Thank at you, the Tobin. following. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I got it to you as soon as I the next time I saw you at uh, yeah. uh, was Gen it BG Spring. Oh, Gen Con, yeah, well, was, yeah, that's right, Gen Con <laughs> was a thing that happened. Um, <laughs> And so yeah, so uh, we're going to be using those for our haunted status. So the uh, the uh, the red side where it's a sad ghost is not haunted, and then when things are haunted, <laughs> the ghost is happy and living it up. Yeah, love it, love it. All right, well, uh, the, st the the stage is set. Uh, Mars is not happy. There's unrest in the in, in the house. Uh, let's uh, <laughs> shuffle up and uh, get this going. All right, Derek, red or blue? Well, because I'm Iron X Rebels today, I got to go red. Okay. Oh, blue, so I'll be first today. All right. I'm drawing six. And I will draw seven. Let's see. Do I like any of these? Um, I am going to... I think I'm going to mulligan. Yeah, I'm going to mulligan. I'm going to go ahead and keep this. Really? Yes. I think uh, I think I've got something to work with here. All right, all right. Well, I'm just shuffling again. Now I'll draw six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And let's let's see what I got. Okay. All right. Well, this is this is what I have. So I'm first. So I'm going to start by, yeah, I'm just going to play, uh, I'm going to call Untamed. Okay. And I'm going to just play my Grave Pixie. And uh, it has an Amber Pip, so I'm going to grab that Amber. And then that is my first turn, so I will ready it and pass turn to you. Okay. Oh, and I should, sorry, I should say, the Grave Pixie has a Destroyed Effect. If you are haunted, archive Grave Pixie. I'm nowhere oh, near yes. haunted. But. I remember that Pixie. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I am going to uh, call Star Alliance, and I'm going to start off by putting Lieutenant Commander Trigon into play. He has an after reap ability. Discard the card, the top card of your deck, and resolve that card's uh, bonus icons as if you had played it. Uh, he does have a draw card. A bonus icon, so I will be drawing a card off the top of my deck. Okay. I was hoping for something better. That's fine. <laughs> um, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to play an artifact. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's not an artifact. I'm going to play an action. Event Horizon has an amber, I, uh, amber bonus icon, so I'll take one okay. of those. And then uh, 
With play effect, discard cards from the top of my deck until I discard an action card or run out of cards. If I discard an action card, I play that card. So here we go. Discarding a Mark III Rookie, a Nikon Outpost, a Retro Technician Lee. Forging an Alliance is an action card, and it's absolutely useless. Boy, that sure fizzled on me, didn't it? <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Um, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and play this action card. It has an amber pip on it, and basically... Uh, I forge a key at cost 7 plus, reduced by 1 for each house represented among cards in play. There's only one house in play, so, uh, yeah, that Bummer. did nothing. Um, okay, off to a great start. Uh, okay, and then I'm going to go ahead. I guess I should have done this first. Uh, wouldn't have mattered, actually. Uh, survey has an amber pip. And it says, uh, I look at the top two cards of my deck and discard one of them. So take a look here. And I will discard this Entropic Manipulator. It's a Martian action that I can't make any use of at the moment. Okay. And uh, this goes in the discard pile. And I think that's it. So I draw two cards. Okay. And I'm ready up pass to you. All right, I'm going to start turn two here, and I think I'm going to call Brobnar. And, uh, Please no Beanstalk. <laughs> Please no Beanstalk. Not now. I'm gonna start not, not already. With... <laughs> I'm going to start with an action card called Concussive Transfer that has a play effect that says, deal three damage to a creature, redistribute all damage on creatures among all creatures. Okay, uh, I am going to go ahead and <laughs> deal three damage to uh, your Star Alliance Trigon. Yeah, Trigon there. Fella, fella over there. It says redistribute all damage on creatures among all creatures. Would, would, would the pixie like to take one by chance? No, you know what? Okay. I think I'll just keep it all on your, your guy, and then I'll discard this. <laughs> but you, thank you so much for asking, though. It's so considerate. Uh, then I'm going to play Brick Nasty out onto my right flank. We love Brick Nasty because after another friendly Brobnar creature fights, you gain an amber. Or I yes. do. <laughs> um, and then the last thing I might do... Well, I'm not going to say last thing, but... The next thing I'm going to do is play Earthshaker onto my right flank. There is a draw pip here, so I'm going to draw a card. And that's, that's not going to help me right very now. Very concealed draw pip, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to see. Blends but, uh, into the background there, yeah. <laughs> but this Earthshaker has a play effect that has, says destroy each creature with power three or lower. Unfortunately, my grave pixie is going to qualify and die, and I'm not haunted, so I won't get to archive her. So this will be destroyed. And then I will simply ready and pass turn to you. Draw back, and it's your turn. Okay. Um, well, I think I'm going to call Mars, uh, particularly the Iron X flavored version. Uh, and let's see. Uh, I'm going to play Exo Vanguard. I'm going to put it on the left with Trigon here. Just as an after fight ability where I, uh, capture one. And then, okay. uh, oh, Martian names. I'm the worst with these. Um, Yixel the Iron Captain, uh, has a play <laughs> effect. Each friendly Ironix creature captures two amber. Uh, I'm going to capture the one amber you have. And place it Bomber. on Yixel. Yeah. Bomber. You're putting a target on your back, Derek. Oh, I'm sure I am. Uh, I'm going to play Clone Home. So, hey, look, a token's happening. So I make a token creature. If there are more <laughs> friendly creatures than enemy creatures, archive Clone Home. So I'm going to go mm. ahead. I'm going to put the token. Uh, let's see. We'll put the token on the right side. I get to take a look at that. Okay. And then this is going into my archives. So I'm just going to stick that over here. Okay. And then I'm going to play Floxum All. It's got an amber pip. Oof. And uh, for each friendly Mars creature, deal three damage to a creature. 
So I have three creatures. So I will do. Actually, I'm just going to spend it all to get Earthshaker off the board. So yeah. all, yeah. All, and it three, sounds like three yeah, three hits. It's, yeah, to take down Earthshaker. Yeah, bummer. <laughs> and uh, I think that's uh, I think that's going to do it for me. So good, I'm going to go good. ahead and ready up. Good. And draw four cards. And pass the turn to you. Okay. Let's have some fun. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, I'm going to call Untamed. Okay. And the first thing I'm going to do is play an action card called Regrowth which has an amber pip and it says return a creature from your discard pile to your hand and that creature this is uh i'm gonna take my deceased earth shaker oh come on i just took back care of that into my hand <laughs> and i'll discard this and then <laughs> and then next i will play which of the eye on my right flank uh, return a card from your discard pile to your hand that's an after reap effect and this is kind of uh interesting but i think i'm gonna go for it here and i'm gonna also play this kangafant not an oh. elephant a kangafant <laughs> not a kangaroo a Kangafant. And uh, this is a creature, very interesting. It says each creature, not just mine, each creature gains after reap, destroy this creature. So uh, this is going to be a wacky game. So I'm going to ready up and draw back and pass turn to you. All right. You asked for it. Oh, no. <laughs> Stupid Kangafant. Um. <laughs> I am going to start off with House Geistoid. Uh-oh. And I think I'm going to play my Cursed Tomb. So it's uh, it gains me an amber. And so basically, uh, every, each creature with no amber on it gains destroyed uh, purge this creature. So. Um, oh, this one. Oh, yeah. no. And then I'm going to play an action. Uh, it's in here somewhere, and I've got another Amber Pip. And uh, if I'm haunted, I'm not quite haunted. I've only got eight cards in my discard pile. So I discard the top five cards of my deck. So one, two, three, four, and five. Oh, that's a lot of Geistoid I'm discarding. Dang it. So a Necto Charge, a Harvest Skimmer, a Commander Drexter. Uh, the Infiltrator and uh, Triangular Newsom all get discarded. But now I am haunted. Woo! Yeah, woo! <laughs> and then, of course, uh, the uh, in here somewhere ends up on top of my discard pile. And uh, that's that. Okay. Uh, reap and fight at your own risk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm passing the turn to you and I draw two cards. Oh, actually, that actually made my decision super easy. I'm going to call Untamed once again. And I'm going to play <laughs> Reclaimed by Nature. Purge and... Oh, Amber Pip first. Yep, yep. Amber Pip Amber. first. Uh, purge oh, and check, artifact. by the way. I'm on check. <laughs> okay. <laughs> With six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> purge an artifact. Resolve its bonus icons as if you played it. I'm going to purge that cursed tomb. Oh, good grief. Okay. And I get an amber pip from it. Yeah? Uh, yes, there was an amber pip on it. So, yeah. Cool. Awesome. So, that's that. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my cauldron into play. Um, and again, this is the one that has an omni ability that lets me put the top card of my deck face up under cauldron. And then once there are three cards under Cauldron, I can play them one at a time as if they're in my hand. Love that. Then I will... <laughs> oh, man. This is tricky because I do want to reap, 
but <laughs> what have I done? I'm going to fight with my Kangafint. And I think I'm going to fight uh, the Mars creature that you have with my Amber. Okay, so you get that back. It has, yeah, it does take, uh, it has only one armor, but it has four power, so that is enough to do it in. And I will take four damage. Yep. On my Kangafint. And then, I think, you know what? I'm just going to keep this fighting happening, I think. And, ah, eh, oh, heck, should I just reap? Nah, you die I'm if fight. you do. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I, I'm going to fight with uh, Witch of the Eye, and I'm going to... What is your token creature's ability again? Uh, after fight, I make a token creature, but it is two power and two armor. Oh. Okay, so that's not good. Um, then I'll kill your other Mars. That has two armor on it as well, just so you're aware. Okay. All right. <laughs> then you can take I'm out the Star Alliance if I'm, you trade. I'm going to take yeah. out the Star Alliance okay. guy. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And I'll take out my witch. And then I will ready up and pass turn to you. Kangafent's still alive. Cauldron on the board. And I'll draw back. You can okay. forge your key, Derek. I shall. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna forge the key. All right, I'm winning. <laughs> <laughs> you Go are. Rebs. Um, <laughs> Rebels. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna call Mars, and I'm gonna take my archives. And uh, first order of business is I'm going to fight my vanguard into your Kangafant, and they'll take each other out. Okay. Bye, Kangafant. Yeah. Okay. And with that, I can uh, I am now free to oh that's after fight, not after reap. Oh well, I can at least reap with it. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm going to play the clone home that I had in my archives. Uh, make a token creature. So I'm going to go ahead, bring another creature out on the board. And uh, if there are more friendly creatures and enemy creatures, and now there are, I get to archive it again. Ugh. Yeah. So the, the, the tokens are happening. I didn't think they would. And now with the winds of death thing, uh, not, no longer, uh, or I'm sorry, the cursed tomb, no longer a threat. Um, it's... Uh, it's uh, everything's going to be fine. It's a regular game. It's Fair Forge. It's, we're playing Fair Forge now. Okay. Then I'm going to play this other creature. Uh, it's just uh, it, it has a possibility where each friendly Mars creature uh, has splash attack too. It's uh, Zutronix the Innovator. All right. Yeah. And then uh, that I think is going to do it. So I will just reap with my token and ready everything up and pass it to you. All right. Drawing one card. I'm certainly glad we're recording earlier this time because last time I forgot the tea was caffeinated and it kept, I was like up so late. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> All right. I'm going to call... I'm going to call House Brobnar. Brobnar! Yeah. The longer you know this me. tea sits, the more I t it tastes like flowers. Oh. Which is, it's fine. It's just, um, just something I'm noticing. Yeah. So it's blooming. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to start by... I'm going to start by using my cauldron, actually, to put the top card of my deck face up under cauldron. So let's see. Oh, uh, it's Blunderbore, a creature. A Brobnar creature. And then I'm going to play Earthshaker to destroy a... all of those. Any oh. creature with power three or lower. Oh, and before I do that, I need to draw a card, but go ahead. Oh, okay. 
So get because I have a Mamet in my deck. I feel I, I'm inclined to ask you: Do you care which of these ends up on top? Which uh, you don't get to see the tokens. I don't think. But oh, you can see. okay. No, yeah. you you can just okay. uh, randomly discard All right. them. I will do tokens. it randomly then. Yeah. yeah sure. Thank okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm also going to. <laughs> The Mamet ends up on top. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also going to play Raider of the Peaks. You know what? I'm not going to pretend you didn't hear that. I'm not going to do that. Oh, I'm gonna okay. Dis- I'm going to discard Raider of the Peaks for now. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and reap with Brick Nasty. And I think that's it. I'm still not taunted, not quite. Uh, but I'll pass turn to you and ready up. Okay. We want to call Geistoid. And uh, I have, this is kind of a, a, an unfortunate uh, algorithm happening here. I'm going to play <laughs> Winds of Death. It has an enhanced capture pip. Which is completely pointless because the board is about to be wiped. So I would right. capture an amber and then you would get it back immediately. Uh, unless I had something that was going to be removed with like a ward or something. But I don't. That's not in the deck. So um, so I'm basically wiping the board. So those yep. die. But before that happens, all creatures in your discard pile go to your archives. So Oh, yes. So let's see. Cool, and then I get rid of. My... And then the ones on the board I mean, go into your discard pile. You're kind of slowing me down from being haunted, but. All right, I'm gonna have to check my haunted status after this because there's quite a bit that I'm archiving. I'm archiving <laughs> my Mark Three rookie, my Retro Technician Lee, my Harvest Skimmer, my Commander Drekstar, my Infiltrator, uh, Triangular Newsom, Yixel. Lieutenant Commander Trigon, Exo Vanguard, Lieutenant Halesta, Zuthernix, and Mamet. All go into my archives. That's scary. Uh, I just have that Raider of the Peaks, <laughs> my Kang Fent, my Witch of the Eye, and Grave Pixie. Uh oh. This is. Now, rough. after purging or uh, removing those cards, uh, I am no longer haunted, though. So. Okay. Anything else? Uh, yeah, I am going to play a Reaver, just has an after fight ability to uh, move one Amber from a friendly creature to your pool, and if you do, you discard that card. Okay. And then I'm going to play a Plow Sword that has an action, put a creature in the discard pile on the bottom of the owner's deck if you do deal three damage to a creature. This, no uh, creatures are in the discard pile, right? Oh, yeah, it's, no. a, it's an artifact. <laughs> yeah, it's an artifact. Okay. Uh, and uh, with all of that shenanigans, I will ready up and pass the turn to you and draw three cards. Cool. <laughs> oh, Derek. Oh, Derek. <gasps> uh, I'm going to finally call House Mars. I'm not going to pick up my archive because I have no Mars cards there. <laughs> but I'll start by doing my cauldron ability to put a card. Ooh, uh, Ether Spider is now in my cauldron, getting ready. But this is this is going to be quite fun. Uh, I'm gonna put. Ooh, uh, Okay, that's fun. That's fun. This is this is all really fun. Fun stuff. <laughs> okay. Let's let's start with this this fun character. Pylolixter. Pylolixter. <laughs> uh has a play effect that says and it's a play and after reap. Choose a player. Gain one amber for each card in that player's archive. Oh, come that on. That player discards each of their archived cards. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> that is perfect timing. How many cards were, were in your archive? 10, 11, 12. There are 13 cards in my archives. <laughs> and all cards get discarded, you said? Uh, yes. That player discards each of their archived cards. So that's one, two, three. 
three, four, five. Well, I'm five, definitely haunted now. Six, seven, <laughs> eight, <laughs> nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So that's why you were asking me about having cards in my archives. Okay, got it. <laughs> wow, let me just pile all that up right there. Uh, and then let's keep going with some Mars activity. Um, I'll put out Ulix the Zookeeper, elusive. Um, this one has an ability after Reap that says put an enemy creature into your archives. If that creature leaves your archives, it's put back into its owner's hand instead. Oh, uh, so we won't do that. And we'll also put out another elusive Mars creature, Dr. Lixelixelfrix. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Lixelfrix, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this one has an after reap ability that lets me play a Mars creature from my discard pile and ready it. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, th I think I'm going to stop there and ready and say check at all the amber in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Good grief. This okay. is hilarious. Yeah, that's, that, that's something. That's um, something. We said it's going to yeah. be a wacky game, right? <laughs> yes, we did. We sure did. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I think I'm going to call Geistoid. Okay. Um, and my archive plan is ruined. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, that backfired the yeah, wind well, blew uh, back uh, at you. <laughs> well, I'm going to use my plow sword to put a creature in a disc uh, discard pile on the bottom of its owner's deck. If you do, deal three damage to a creature. I will grab, let's see, one of these many creatures. Oh, I think I will put... You sure you don't want to put one of mine? Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> um <sighs> I'm going to put, uh, I think we'll, actually, I'm going to put the Infiltrator. I'm going to take the Infiltrator out of my discard pile and put it underneath my deck. Um, okay. And then I'm going to deal three damage, and, oh, I got to kill that Flixo Star. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Flixo Star's got to go. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah. See you soon, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then, let's see. But you do realize my doctor's effect says I can play a, car, a Mars creature from my discard pile and ready it. I, I mean, did miss you that. You don't have That's anything okay. in your archive that it's worth it, but yeah. I do. <laughs> um, I think I will go ahead and play Harvest Skimmer. Basically, it just has an after reap ability. Uh, where I discard the top card of my deck, and if it's a creature, I gain an amber. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, yeah, my deck kind of stalled out thanks to your shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I didn't even know that card was a thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just reap with the reaver. It has an after reap ability that's not gonna matter because there's no captured amber on the board, so I'm just collecting that amber. Uh, and then I'm going to play Boo. It has an Amber Pip. And discard the top ten cards of a player's deck. And I am going to choose myself. Okay. And one, Man, two, three, four, five, six. I only have six cards left in my deck. And the cards okay. I'm discarding is Scout Pete, Red Planet Ray Gun, Instance Entangler, Mars First, Repli Re Replicative Growth, and then the Infiltrator I just put on the bottom. Okay. All going there. And then, of course, uh, the boo itself, which I think I already stuck <laughs> Boo. On yeah. Yeah. So now you, you have no deck. I do not have a draw deck presently, okay. right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I'm about to reshuffle because I'm going to end the turn. Ready up and pass. I need to draw two cards, and I'm going to have to reshuffle to do that. So. And now you're no you longer though. haunted. Yep, I will no longer be haunted. All right, as soon as I, I will start my turn by forging a key. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six armor spent. I will forge my yellow key. All right, that was that last turn was something else. I'm gonna go ahead and call 
House Mars again. And I'm gonna now use my cauldron and put another card face up. And then uh, I will now, if there are three cards under cauldron, play them one at a time as if they were in your hand. So let's see. We have a blunderbore with an after fight effect. If you are haunted, your opponent loses two. Otherwise, your opponent loses one. So let's, we'll put that fella there. Uh, then we have Berserker Slam, which has an Amber Pip. Deal four damage to a flank creature. If this damage destroys that creature, its controller loses one Amber. Uh, so um, I'm going to use the Berserker Slam to deal four damage to your Reaver. Okay. And then I lose um, one. And since it destroy, it's destroyed, you lose one. I'll discard that. And then I'll play Ether Spider. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, Ether Spider deals no damage when fighting. Each amber that would be added to your opponent's pool is captured by Ether Spider instead. Whoa. Okay. Um, other things. Let me slide some cards down. Oh. I'm getting a crazy glare here, so let me not do it that much. Um, then I'm going to also play another Dr. Xylazofrex here. <laughs> and then I'm going to... I'm going to play an action card that's a, uh, it's called Destructive Analysis. Uh, I'll get an Amber and uh, deal two damage to a creature, and then I could purge any number of cards from my archives to deal an additional two damage to the same creature for each card purged. So I'm going to go ahead and deal two damage to your Harvest Skimmer. Okay. And then I think I might... Purge two cards just to, and that was purge, right? Oof. Okay. I'm going to part purge two cards from my archives. The Raider of Peaks and Kangafent are gone, and that will kill your Harvest Skimmer. Okay. And then... I will reap with my readied uh, Dr. Lysolfrex. And then, uh, when I re after reap, play a Mars creature from your discard pile and ready it. So, guess who's coming back, Derek? <laughs> <laughs> uh, old Pyloxic Stir. And okay. I'll choose myself this time to gain one amber. So I'm just going to gain two because I have two cards in my archive. And I will then uh, discard both of these cards. So I'll gain two amber, discard both of these. And I have one more. I think I probably should have reaped with this first. Oh. Actually, no, I can't, because um, there are no enemy creatures out right now. So I'll just reap with uh, Ulix, the zookeeper, for another amber. And uh, this gets discarded. And then I'll say check at uh, all the amber once again. And ready up. Okay, the rebels aren't feeling too hot here. Um <laughs> So uh, it's not a not very eventful turn, but uh, we're gonna I'm gonna go call Geistoid. Uh, here's the infiltrator has a capture pit, but uh, this actually enters play on your side of the board, so the capture okay. pit does not do anything because I don't have any creatures to capture it to. So gotcha. uh, so yeah, this comes. I'm gonna put this on. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put it on the right actually, next on to the, right? the that Philo Star. Um, okay. So yeah. And uh, 
And then I'm going to use my plow sword. I'm going to put my harvest skimmer on the bottom of my deck so that I can deal three damage. And I will take out the doctor next to your to the left of your ether spider. Okay. To the left of my ether spider. This one. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's elusive. It's a it's just direct damage. It's not a oh, fight. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, and that's it. Uh, I'm gonna ready it up and then draw one card. Pass to you. And and that discard forge. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, thanks to you killing that creature, I am now haunted. Uh, so I will forge a key. One, two, three, four, five. Six, and I will call Untamed and place. Oh wait, let me forge the key, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I will call Untamed and play Spooky Charge. And if I'm haunted, forge a key at current cost. Shuffle my discard pile into my deck. One, yeah. two, three, four, five, six. Nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. That was crazy. That was yeah. that, me gaining 13 amber. Wow. Like that was that was wild right after your winds of death that I was able to pull that off. Yeah, that was that was the game right there. I don't think I had an answer to it. Um, and uh, I, and like I said, I, I well, as soon as I cracked open this pod for the rebels, I looked at it and I was like, there is really not much here. Uh, <laughs> like, and and then you didn't have unfathomable uh, or like something like Equidon that could have like said, well, m- make me get rid of half the amber or something. Right. Well, so this uh, is, the Martian Civil War is is a casual format, so there's not it's not held to like the the strict tournament rules. Um, so you can play this with any set, essentially, of Keyforge. Um, based on the pod I have, I would prefer to play this with something that also generates tokens like Winds of Exchange yeah. or something from Menagerie or, or, you know, I need something to make tokens because I have two ways to get tokens on the board. Yeah. So. <laughs> I have Clone Home as well. And I think that yeah. might be... Oh, I have two clone homes that would have let me uh, create token creatures. <gasps> My beanstalk was two cards away. Uh, well, it didn't happen, but you didn't need it. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I did not need it. This Mars pod is strong. <laughs> it is. It is pretty intense. So um, don't mess with the peaceful Elder Tanner. So that's going to do it for this episode of T-Forge. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe and click that notification bell if you want to know when Board Game Geek puts up more videos. Uh, we'll be back next month with some more T-Forge fun and more tea sampling. Woo! And, uh, Good I'm game, One Derek. last sniff of this here. Yeah. Floral teas here. <laughs> yeah, I like this one.